Hello, cool cats and kittens. My name is Alan Hines and welcome back to the channel. Now today, we're gonna to be discussing about why I use roof camera and why I prioritize that camera view over any other view. It's a quite a frequently asked topic and I decided to do a video on it to answer you guys' questions on it. So, let's get right into it. So, why do I use roof camera? Well, I suppose it's simply down to the fact that I've used it since the start. I mean, back in Need for Speed Underground, when I first started playing on my PlayStation 2, the really only camera that I used back then was the third person view, you know, the view that you see from behind the car. And back in those days, there was no first person, there was no copy camera. There might have been a bumper view, but that didn't really give you any information, and to be honest, it was more fun seeing the car race around the track. Over those years, I, I suppose I tried to get more of a real experience and I started using cockpit camera back in Forza Motorsport 3, maybe 4 when it first came out. But again, I felt really restricted and felt kind of claustrophobic in the car, simply because I couldn't see much of what was going on behind, uh, beside me. I couldn't, I found it difficult to tandem, uh, I found it difficult to judge where I was on the track and to be honest, I don't really think my old, uh, what was it, 9, 6, uh, that square ra weird aspect ratio monitor at the time really helps but I just found that the bonnet camera especially on Forza was a big advantage for me. When I kind of dabbled the swap it in Gran Turismo the roof camera was always a really nice camera and it gave a lot of information. Uh, it gave so much information in fact that I felt that it was probably one of the better camera views to use and I know back then a lot of people did use it. It was probably one of the easier cameras, camera views that kind of gave you the element of being in a first person view but also giving you enough information that you could really push yourself and I suppose really put some great runs down. It's probably worth mentioning also that back in those days I, I was trying to improve my technique in driving, I was trying to make myself a better driver and I felt that using a roof camera or a bond camera uh, would allow me to see more and actually allow me to practice the techniques I needed to practice, which is the left foot braking, which is the timing of the transition, which is, you know, learning the limits of a car. And while I could have done that in the cockpit view, I suppose as a kid I just wanted the easy way out, right? <laughs> so I suppose the thing is, when I moved to Seto, or when I moved to PC, I stayed with it. I found that the camera view gave me a lot more vision. I could see further, I could see deeper into the corner, I could see over other cars, so I could see where they were going and how to react to that. And to be honest, I could actually tell when someone else was making a mistake before really their car actually kind of displayed it. And so I was able to react what they were going to do before they did. And I think that was a huge advantage, especially in the early years of competing in a Ciro when most other people might have been prioritized the, the rear view of third person or maybe the cockpit view, I could kind of get an element of both and still be able to be, uh, you know, judging ahead of what they were going to do. I think another thing worth mentioning is that there's been a lot of uh, Formula 1 esports uh, this particular pandemic, I suppose. And if you watch again, uh, a lot of those foreign, real Formula 1 drivers and even the esports drivers as well who, who compete in, on the Formula 1 game professionally, they all use the T camera or, or the, the TV camera. So again, I suppose it's because they can see further, they can see um, the car ahead of them, they can kind of see over the roof of the car so they can see where they are on the track and I suppose it just gives them more vision and more detail um, what, what the car is actually doing when they're going around the track. You know, they can see their apexes, they can see the line. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you can actually see over the barrier and see if there's any, you know, blockages or anything like that around the corner, especially on Monaco, for example. Um, of course, again, I use NECFX when it comes to the roof camera, which is a, a device that, well, with my settings, uh, allows me to turn the camera view based on my steering input. So essentially, if I turn the steering wheel 90 degrees, it moves the neck effects or the, the actual static camera on the roof of the car about 5 or 10 degrees, roughly. And that allows me, when I'm in drift, to actually see uh, where my wheel direction is and move the camera to that point so I can see the car beside me or go in the direction that I'm going. Um, that's been a kind of a, a, a big thing for me. I used it back in LFS back in the day and I thought it was fantastic and I tried to 
find something in a setup. And at the time it was real head motion, but now it's neck FX. That's what I use. And so if you guys want to use that too, I have a video. I'll link it down in the description and you guys can use my settings too. So another option when it comes to using the roof camera is using a high field of view without using any um, neck FX or real head motion. So essentially you're running a static camera with one single monitor and then using a high field of view, gaining an extra, I suppose, fisheye lens style of seeing more left and right. Um, it's quite a trippy camera view to use, to be quite honest. Um, it kind of messes with your head initially, like what neck FX or real head motion does, I suppose. Um, but it does have an advantage in the sense that, you know, the camera is static, it's pointing straight the whole time, and it does allow you to see it just, a, it does allow you to reference points um, a little bit more consistently so it's easier to you know reference where you're going because of course in drifting no two runs are exactly the same your steering input is never the same so it's quite hard to be consistent sometimes so the question that gets asked to me a lot is why i don't use vr or triple screen for example well simply put it it's the expense i would have to change a lot of my setup to adapt it of course you know maybe my computer setup might only need a graphics card change but I'm still looking at roughly about a thousand euros to update my system at the minimum to try and get a VR headset going. That's if, if I wanted to take it quite serious in that upgrade. Of course, VR headsets range from between anything 150 euros up to what, 800 euros maybe? Um, and compatible graphics cards range from anything from about 250 euros to 900 euros or a thousand euros. So there's obviously a kind of a cheap way of doing it and there's obviously an expensive way. Of course, I suppose, Using the expense excuse is kind of, well, a lame excuse really. I mean, like, the cost of it isn't a whole lot. And I suppose the main reasoning as to why I don't use a VR headset is simply because of the fact it doesn't really gain me any advantage. I don't really feel using a VR headset would gain me advantage in the esports world. Um, however, I don't think it would gain me an advantage in the real world either. Personally, I think it's probably maybe due to my confidence, but I feel like that my real world experience is quite relative to the sim stuff in the sense that, well, if I use the VR in the, in the, the sim world, I don't think it would gain me any advantage in the real world either. Um, maybe in a situation of when, you know, you're trying to learn a new circuit. And I think that's the only time I would use a VR headset if I was trying to learn a circuit I was never at before. Um, otherwise, I don't really feel like that it, it is a worthwhile upgrade for myself. Um, again, like I said, I've been using the roof camera or a static camera or single screen for many, many years and I've just adapted to it. Um, and I feel like considering at my current level in the esports world, I don't think it would gain me um, a huge percentage of, of a leap that it would allow me to just beat everyone, uh, beat everyone up basically. So in that sense, I suppose it doesn't really benefit me in any way. Of course, it probably would gain an advantage for me if I was trying to learn a new track, like I said. Of course, using a, a VR headset would al uh, allow me to learn visual points and knowing where to look on the track to, to kind of achieve a certain area, uh, uh, well, I suppose using reference points essentially. So um, in that sense, VR does have an advantage and it's something I would like to own in the future, but I don't see myself converting it to it anytime soon. And the same can be said for triple screens. I mean, I would prioritize a triple screen setup over VR simply because, well, I like to live stream and using um, triple screens would be much nicer for uh, live streaming. VR would be kind of restrictive in that sense. But I mean, it's the extra cost that I don't really need to spend. I mean, it, it would gain me maybe a small advantage. Maybe I wouldn't need to run neck effects so much anymore. But ultimately, I don't really see it gaining a huge advantage that it's worth investing in. However, don't be surprised if you get to see any of that stuff anytime soon. Uh, I'm always upgrading my setup. I've recently upgraded my single monitor to a bigger 27 inch monitor and I will be experimenting with different hertz rates and stuff soon. So there'll be another video on whether or not a high quality monitor is actually beneficial to drifting in the eSports world. So a video to be expected on that soon. But like I said, don't be expected, don't be expect me to not get a VR headset or triple screen setup. It's something I would love to have and I mean I love to have every single tool I can get to try and maybe you know gain a small bit of advantage here or there but in this current time and world 
any of that stuff doesn't really give me advantage i don't really feel the reasoning to spend the money on plus why change if it's not broken right <laughs> So that is it for today folks, hope you guys enjoyed this video, hopefully it answered some of your questions and uh, yeah if you have any more put them down in the comment section down below, I'd be happy to maybe make a video on it or maybe answer it as well. Uh, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, let me know what you guys think of the video, um, check me out on social medias, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, that would be nice too and um, yeah I'll talk to you guys very very soon, stay tuned to the channel, more content coming soon, cheers, goodbye.